Hello, and thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tech Exec Podcast, where we triple your impact per engineer. As always, I'm your host, Avibin Yasef, advisor and consultant to tech executives worldwide. And our subject today is tech theft. Not tech debt, but tech theft. Where are you stealing when it comes to tech debt? So what am I talking about? I'm going to cut straight to the chase. I believe that the majority of the companies I talk to have ended up in a particular situation where they have achieved an agreement about the amount of time that the engineers have to do engineering things. Most companies actually call that tech debt time. So right off the bat, you have agreed with product or whoever you need to get agreement with that you're going to spend 10, 15, 20, 25, 30% of your team's time handling tech debt. Not doing stuff that's on product's roadmap, but doing tech debt. And I'm not making it up. I have seen companies with 30% of their time pre-allocated. So we start a quarter and 30% of the time is already allocated to that. We're not talking about, you know, holidays, vacations, people getting COVID. The actual time already is cut by 30%. And if you're in this situation, I'm guessing the story goes something like this. Your team has some issues that it needs to address. It could never actually make it so that those things were on the roadmap. And then it ended up biting you in the behind. So after this happened a few times, you just reach some agreement with product where they give you time to do stuff. They don't want to know about it. You don't want to have to talk to them about it. And you feel like you are now successful. Well, I'm sorry, but this is so convoluted. And essentially, you're just running away from solving the problem because instead of communicating with product in a way that allows you to truly pinpoint those tasks that are worth doing, you just decided on this. And yeah, it's nice, especially for the first few months, because if you've been accumulating more and more important things to do that you never got to, so now you feel like this 30% is really worth it. But what happens later? Because no one ever comes back and says, hey, VP product, you know what? We don't need 30%. No one does that, right? Like no one actually comes over and says, hey, I've got a lot of budget left over. I don't think I need the same amount next year. No one does that. Once you have been given time, you're going to keep using it. It's like Parkinson's law. You're going to use the entire time you've got to do those things. And my problem with it is that with time, your team is going to start doing more and more work there in the tech debt time that is just not interesting, not valuable. We're not considering the Pareto principle that says we're going to get 80% of the impact by treating only 20% of the tech debt, for example. And this tech theft is, in fact, how we are stealing time, stealing possible value from the company because we're doing, you know, techie stuff. So yeah, we're factoring this. We're looking at that thing that seems to be currently topping Hacker News. We feel good, but we have stopped delivering impact, or at least we're not doing the most impactful thing we could be doing. I don't think this is how we should be operating. I think that you should be operating from day one in a mental model where you are in partnership and always in sync with product. You're not finding ways to shortcut having to talk to them. But if you have healthy teams, teams where every team has its own PM, where they are collaborating, be part of one big team, where they learn how to communicate like partners, Only if you get that, you can actually start building really impactful teams. And those teams don't just use this power of saying, I've got X amount of time, I'm going to use that to do whatever I want, because then you're going to use it, even if you don't have anything important to do. But those teams learn how to communicate with their PMs. They learn how to say, we need this because it has this and that impact. If we don't take the time to upgrade this package, we're gonna end up having security vulnerabilities that we cannot fix in the next three months. So let's do it now. For tech debt, for the majority of tech debt, your team should be collaborating with product, putting a value on what they're doing, because 
it genuinely is something that's, you know, keeping the lights on sort of work, it should come at the cost of other feature development and product need to be able to decide what comes first. Your engineers can't just wave their hands and say, no, 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 we have to do this. They have to explain things. I know it's weird, but they have to explain. They have to make a case. And if you're feeling like that's going to be too much work, that means you're not communicating well enough with product right now. And this is great exercise for you because it's a lot easier to make the case for a stupid bug than to do it for bigger picture stuff. Now, the real bigger picture stuff, the things where your team is not just working on tech debt and keep thieving more work, but actually creating tech capital, creating innovation. When your team is doing that, that is actually the sort of stuff where I am pro having time for the team to just experiment. That is where intermissions actually pay off. So if you need to read more about how to manage non-feature work with product and about intermissions in order to inject innovation habitually into your organization to create high impact, high innovation, high creativity teams, do check out the free sample chapter for my book, The Tech Executive Operating System, that talks precisely about that. There's a link in the show notes. And if you do that, you can stop thieving time, you can stop making up work, and you can start delivering value. Be focused on it and enjoy it. That's it for this week. Thank you for joining me. If you haven't yet, do subscribe to my newsletter. It's the best newsletter online for tech executives. And if you have any questions or comments, my email is always in the show notes and I'm always happy to hear from listeners. Thank you. Talk soon.